I want to welcome you to, here to Heritage Church this morning as we celebrate the gifts of women. I also want to welcome those who are joining us online. This morning, we welcome to our pulpit, Reverend Inala Shavula. She has been the pastor at uh, Tanuka Church in Malawi, which is part of the Central African Presbytery. As many of you know, Heritage has been in partnership with the Chinooka Church the past 14 years, helping to provide grain, solar lights, a maize mill, and connection to the electrical grid. She is currently studying at the Austin Theological Seminary in Texas for her Master of Arts in Christian Ministry. Please extend a warm Heritage welcome to our partner in ministry, Reverend Enala Shavula. Um, just a few things to announce uh, and bring your attention to this morning. First of all, I want to let you know about um, the passing of uh, Bob Trimble on Friday at home. Um, he, he is the husband of uh, Gail Trimble. So please keep Gail and, your, uh, Gail and her family in your prayers. As you know, he was a longtime member of our church as well as a pillar, and he will be greatly missed. Um, a few other things. Um, the Women's Bible Study Lydia's Circle will meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. and the Men's Prayer Breakfast will meet this Wednesday at 6.30 and both will be in the church library. Also, we have two more um, sessions for the Lenten program uh, this Wednesday as well as next and that will be at 6.30. Um, and then we have uh, HVW is putting on our um, yearly uh, Palm Sunday, what we call extravaganda, and we need everyone's help with that, whether you can bring food, especially sandwiches, um, or help with setup or cleanup, it would be greatly appreciated. And there is a sign-up uh, poster in the hall. Uh, any other uh, announcements uh, or notices, please refer to your bulletin or to our uh, online website. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord.
children of God, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Take a minute now and think of what you might have done this past week or in the last few days. Maybe you said something that hurt your spouse or your friend or your child or someone. Maybe you did something wrong and you know it. We usually all know when our conscience bothers us, right? Maybe there are things in our lives that we need to reflect upon in the season of Lent and correct. So I call us now to think of those things as we pray our prayer of confession together. Lord God, you created us to be in communion with you and with each other. We confess that we often try to go it alone and forget that in Christ we are never alone. Forgive us when we let our individualism slip into selfishness. Help us instead to work together as the body in Christ, held together by your Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray silently to you. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ, and Christ died for us, and Christ rose again for us. Alleluia, we are forgiven. Christ our Lord, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we feel God's spirit in our lives and in the world, let us respond by offering our gifts to God while Gary offers his musical talents. 
We invite you to come forward with your offering, symbolic of all the many ways people offer gifts and talents to God. Let every gift and every giver glorify God this day in the days ahead. the prayer of dedication. Dear God, receive this, our love offering, in gratitude and thanksgiving for the love you have shown us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 11 through 17. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? 
No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, as the children come up, I'd also like to have Susan Palmer and Reverend Shivala join me up here also. So today we are very honored to have Reverend Chivala with us. Chivula. I'm sorry. Chivula. I will hope to get this right. Join us. She is currently in our country studying at the Austin Seminary in Texas. And as spring break, she's here to visit with us. And so I thought it'd be nice for you to get to meet her. And so these are two of our children. This is, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Isabella Bowman. This is my sister, Ivana Bowman. You want to say your name? I'm Ivana Bowman, but you can call me Iva. Iva. So Ivan, Ivan and Izzy. And so, yeah. So they're with us today, and Alex is back there. I see Alex. He greeted you. Well, we have been. Since 2010, our church originally sponsored a seminary student in Africa in the uh, Central African Presbytery. And when she, that, that pastor graduated, we followed her to her first church, which is Chinooka. Now, Malawi is a very long, long country, if you can imagine. If we put it here in the United States, it would stretch all the way from New York, through Pennsylvania, through DC and Virginia, all the way down, almost all the way through North Carolina. Can you imagine a country that long? Yes, Alex. How long is it, how long is it the, the country? I don't know exactly, I would have to look it up, exactly how many miles, I, kilometers actually, they would probably measure it in but how many miles it is. But that, if you imagine going all the way from New York down to North Carolina, that's a <laughs> long way. And the church in Chinooka is at the very, very top near Tanzania. So, but we have been what we call partners with the church in Chinooka. Now, what do partners do? Do you know what partners do? Help each other. Yeah. Help and provide for each other. We talk with each other, and we listen to each other, and we help with perhaps their needs, and we care for each other. So we've been doing that for years. So once, early on, there was famine, twice. In a, twice. And we were able to help out with sending a little bit of money so they could buy food and distribute food to their people there. One of the main things we ran, or learned, because as we learned about Chinooka and what, what was there and, and what. You know, they have a church of how many? 358 members. 358 members. Can you imagine 358 members trying to be in one place to worship? Yes. So we found out that it was hard to communicate with them because they had to go someplace else to charge their phones. And, that, and so we had another partner. As we say, partners help partners. Susan Palmer and I went to the Malawi Mission, Mission Network, where people who work in Malawi meet and share ideas. And one of the th ideas we found was we could get solar lights. There was somebody working in Malawi that would deliver solar lights. So that allowed them to have light, 
They let them have power, let them charge their phone, cell phones without having to go a long way to get it done. So over the years, we've been able to do that because of another partner. So we belong to several partnerships. And then eventually we asked, what did you need? And they, they said they needed electricity. So another partner helped in. And through the Na National Capital Presbytery, we were able to match a, loan, uh, match a grant to help send money to help get electricity to Chinook. So that's what partners do. We help each other. And you know what they do? They prayed for us this whole time. Remember when we, were, we weren't able to meet and we had COVID? You know who was praying for us? Chinooka. They pray for us all the time. They pray that our church will grow. They pray for how we're doing. So I wanted to show, here's some pictures. Because Mrs. Mrs. Palmer and uh, Reverend... Our, yeah, our pastor, <laughs> my mind is going, uh, went to Malawi in 2019. And here's some of the pictures from the church. Now, some of them from other places, but some of the church. You want to explain some of those? Yeah. You or Susan? I can hold it up for you. Yeah. Okay. So, you have seen these. These, is, these are the children who are coming to Sunday school every Sunday. We have a lot of children who are coming for Sunday school. And also, they are the Sunday school. They sit together here. We prepare the mat, and then they sit together, uh, listening to the story, Bible story, sharing whatever they have to share to other children, and also, we have time, they sing, they have a choir. We have a choir at the church for Sunday school. So they sing at the church and they dance. Look, here they were singing and dancing. So these are uh, uh, some of the things the Sunday school they do in Malawi. Because, you know, we have just a day where the children of our church members come and they fellowship together. So this is a great day for them where they can uh, sing, dance, rejoice, and share uh, some other uh, things that they have in their home. Yeah, so this is what they are doing in Malawi. Okay. So we have for Reverend Chivala, Chivula, we have a picture, some of the children of heritage. These are pictures of yes. some of you, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we do have our teenagers right now, mm -hmm. our youth, are in Fellowship Hall preparing fellowship for all of us. Yeah. They are doing the fellowship hour today Good. for us. Good. Yes? I don't, see a, I don't see a picture of us. You don't see a picture of us? Well, I don't know if you're in here because this is a lot of our, our nurse, children who are in the nursery. But here, I, Iva and Izzy are here, I know. And... So we will also meet. We have a lot of young ones. Yes. We have a lot of young ones you will see soon in our. Yes. So the uh, funny thing that I have seen here, you have a lot of praying materials. You have a lot of praying materials. But here, in our church, we don't have the praying materials. You know, look at it. You are having a lot of the praying materials. But the, for us, we don't have. Hmm. <laughs> Do any of you have a question? No? Okay. So can we join us in prayer, okay? Dear God, bless our partnership with the church in Chinooka. Bless Reverend Shivala as she studies and returns home. We thank you for partnership. We thank you for having the ability to listen, to care, and to help one another. 
as you, as you have asked us to do. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, and if you'd like to go on to Sunday school. Thank you. Our second reading is coming from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, starting from verse 9 to 12. Verse 9, two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and thou does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. This is the word of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable before your sight, O oh Lord, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Uh, my name is Enala, E-N-A-L-A, Chavura, 
C H A V U L A. That's my name, Enara Chavura, from Malawi, and uh, I was ministering at Chinunka Congregation before I came here for my studies in Austin. And uh, as our elder Frank has already explained that we have been in partnership with this church for 14 years now, and uh, our partnership is so wonderful. You know, you have done a lot to Chinunka congregation. As of now, I can say uh, you helped us with the uh, food when we had famine. After that, you helped us with the tra buying the transformer which has given us electricity at our press. And uh, it has really changed the shape of Chinooka congregation. Then you also helped us with the maize meal. Do you know what? The maize meal has done a lot. You are just seeing that you have helped us with the food transformer and the maize meal. But the maize meal is preaching about Heritage Presbyterian Church in our area. Most of the women, they were going for a long distances to have their flour, maize flour, but now they come near at the church. They are really helped. And also, it has helped us, most of you maybe, you have seen the picture of our church, Chinuka church, the way it was looking like. Uh, that mesmer has helped us to renovate the church. As I am speaking to you now, the church had the potholes inside, but now we have refrowed the church, and it is looking good. We had open windows, but uh, through that mess meal, the money we are getting from the mess meal, it has helped us to fix steel windows, even though we haven't put the grasses on it. But we have now steel windows on the church. It's a great development. It's a great development. We thank God for this partnership. May God bless you. Today's uh, theme, we are continuing in this season of Lent. And uh, today, our topic, what we are going to look on is uh, we are not alone. We are not alone. I was born in a village and raised there. One day, I went to school in the morning when I was in standard eight. While I'm there at school, the rain started falling until the time when we were to knock off. Our home was not far from the school, but in between our home and the school, there is a river. I and my brothers started going back home. We found the river was full of running water. We waited for a while so that the water would go down, but it took a long time. We were hungry and we wanted to go home and eat. We agreed to go into the water and cross the river. We entered the water, but the water had strong force, and my brother held my hand. But when we were about to cross the river, there was a deep ditch. 
And with that force, I re- my brother left me alone. Suddenly, I was swept by the river. Then my brother saw me that I have dipped in the water. He came down again in the water and he lifted me with his hand. I was rescued. It would be my last day that day. I would have drawn in the river that day. But because we were two, three, he rescued me. Two are better than one. For me to be here in America, it took someone to have that effort of speaking with the seminary. There in Austin Seminary, I had a desire to continue with my studies, but there was no way to do it. Then I decided to go to my general, church general secretary of Livingstonia Synod. I went there and told him that I want to continue with my uh, studies if there is any opportunity of scholarships. He said, okay, we will see if there is any chance. After a year, he texted me the message and said, Enara, you said you want to go further with your studies. Are you still interested? I said, yes. I'm very interested to do that. Then he said, okay, there is a friend in Austin has told us that there is a press They need one student to go and study, but it is in America. Are you ready to go and leave your family? (laughs) I said, yes, I will go. I will go. Then, you know, I was supposed to be here in 2020, but because of COVID-19, said, (laughs) wait, your time will come. (laughs) So I said, I waited for three years. Last year is when they said, okay, now you can come and do your studies. So I came in Austin uh, in August, 29th August of 2023. This to happen is because there was someone in Austin Seminary. And that one was Tom O'Mara. But now he passed away in November. May his soul rest in peace. He was the one who advocated my coming here. He did everything for me to come here. So, two are better than one. Amen. Chinooka, Chinooka congregation, they had a problem with food. We had famine. Heritage Presbyterian Church came in and helped. Chinunga had no rights. We, you started with the solar lamps, that solar system. We were helped in our homes to have right. And then after, thereafter, we were connected to ESCOM, which is Electricity Supply Company of Malawi, because Heritage take part in buying the transformer and uh, paying for the connections and everything that we have, de- we have done in Shinunga congregation. Now Shinunga is having mess meals, which I've already talked that it is helping Shinunga congregation. And uh, the families are helped. You know, we depend on uh, Manners from the congregation. But because of that, Mesbin, Mesmil, now we are being helped. In some other budgets, we just go to the Mesmil and it is helping us. So, Heritage Presbyterian Church to be in partnership with the Chinunga congregation 
it is really helping us spiritually and also physically. Two are better than one. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the passage that we have read. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. It's just a continuation. If you can start from verse 1, you will hear the whole story where it starts. But I will just rely on uh, verses 9 to 12, where it is just a continuation of uh, uh, yeah, it speaks about the, uh, the coming together. Helping one another, the advantage of being in companionship. And the passage we have read, it appreciates the companionship. Companionship uh, is a source in an uncertain and unsatisfying world. It is teaching us that we need to rely upon one another. Two are better than one. Two or more who live in any kind of society and join their powers together in pursuit, in pursuit of an important object are better than one. They act more cheerful and accomplish their desire, the desires more readily than any of them could do in a solitary start because they have a good reward for the Yareba. They have great benefit by such combinations and conjunctions of their counsels and abilities, whereby they exceedingly support, encourage, and strengthen each other and effect many things which none of them could have affected if it depends on individual or maybe alone or working or alone. The writer of the Ecclesiastes is speaking about living together, which is sure it is profitable both to procure us greater happiness, which is the subject of the ninth verse, two are better than one and to preserve us in the enjoyment of it when we have attained it, which is the subject of the uh, following verses that we are going to look on. Companionship is helpful and profitable. Companion is a help when there is work to be done or when one falls and need help of getting up. Companion can keep a friend warm in a cold night and can help fight off enemies. If two people can work together, each person's work complements the other's effort and therefore enables them to complete more tasks with less effort. A person journeying alone may perish from exposure or injury, while one who had a companion could count speedy to be rescued. Think of my story. If I was alone, I would have drawn. But because I have some people, they rescued me. Think of Chinunka. If Chinooka was alone, would have not have that electricity. So, in a companionship, there is advantages that makes to change the situation and help in time of need. Why are two better than one? I will just share you with the three points. To get work more done than one, there is a good reward of their labor. If you have work, you have two hands, three hands coming together. 
the work is easily done within a short period of time. So working together helps us to get work done easily, but also in good time. Two people support each other. When one falls, the other person may lift you up. This fall can be physical fall, but also can be emotional fall, but also can be spiritual fall. If you are two, like here as a church, we can lift each other spiritually, physically, emotionally, as we fellowship together, as we help one another, as we touch, we hold hands with each other, we can help one another. So, being two is better than being alone. Two can strengthen one another, can warm one another. You know, in spiritual life, sometimes we become cold if we are alone. But if we meet as a group, as we did, as we are doing Bible studies, eh, fellowshipping together, sharing the word of God, we warm one another. In our uh, country, we usually, when we come to church, uh, most of the Sundays, we have choirs, we sing, we worship together, we sing praises, and we even shout in the church. We are saying that we are making our spiritual life warm. Amen. Amen. So, two can keep each other warm. It's not only in marriage, but as we fellowship together. Amen. The other things, uh, the last verse of uh, Ecclesiastic that I have read in verse 12, there is saying the, three co- the threefold cords cannot quickly break because there is power combined together. Really, when we are together, no one can break us. When we are united, when we are holding hands, spiritually, emotionally, no one can part us. We will be together. We will be united. And the other people have even said that this, the third one who is amid us, is Jesus himself. Amen who holds us our hands so that we can keep on trusting in God. We can keep on worshiping. We can keep on testifying the greatness of God. The preacher is, in Ecclesiastic, is emphasizing on safetyness and also the strength that we need to have as we are journeying in this life. We have challenges in our life. We have downfalls in our life. And we meet some situations that on our own we can't stand. But if we rely in this unity, there is power to overcome the activities of the devil who comes to cheat us, we can overcome it because there is power in unity. There is a calling here that we need to remain united all the time. The three God is seen more especially uh, in our Christian life is an identification of having faith together also having hope and love. This may also mean that this strength can be gained through our human relationships. We need to have these relationships amongst us. It will help us. Amongst the church, there is one amongst the early church fathers. Ambrose said, 
He saw Christ is the one who lives us in this uh, life. Jesus came here as now we are in this land. The reason, the main reason Jesus came into this world was not to condemn us, was not to judge, but he came to join us to our God, to make companionship with us in our life journeys that we are uh, pursuing in this, uh, in this world. So Jesus came to be our companion, uh, uh, to, to accompany us in our life journey. Luke, in his writing, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he writes that Jesus came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recover the sight of the blind, to let the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year acceptable to the Lord. This is the mission of Christ. Christ incarnated to live in us, to live with us each and every day. When I'm saying to live with us, he is side by side with us. To live in us, he is in our lives. He is with us all the time. So the verse 16, at the last there, it is also uh, uh, speaking about the whosoever believes in him. Whosoever believes in him. That means whoever has ac accepted to walk with the Christ, to be in the Christ, to be with the Christ, has that privilege of having the eternal life. So, let us walk, let us live with Christ, in Christ, so that we may attain this life Christ has given us. In this companionship of the Christ, we will attain the everlasting life that is found only in Christ, if we believe in him. Christ is our companion with us, just to make us go through this world and attain this life he has given us. What do we learn from these passages? What do we learn? In all union, there is success and safety. The union of Christians, more especially the union of Christians, we as believers. When two are crossly joined in holy love and fellowship, Christ by the Holy Spirit will come and join the church in a free fold God where no one can break it. Where no one can break it. There is hope in union. There is hope in union. There is love in union. There is freedom in union. You know, I'm from Malawi. You are here. Just to be together, I'm free. I have that freedom. I have come to my brothers, to my sisters. I'm free because Christ is the center of this partnership. Christ is the center of this union. So when we have this, we, are, we have freedom. There is freedom in union. There is warmth when Christians converge together in the love of Christ and join in singing his praises. Fellowshipping together, there is warmth. In this companionship, we see that it is a great value of having this human relationship with one another. So two are better than one. 
we are not alone in this journey. We have Christ, I mean, it's us. We have Christ in our lives who will make us go through, pass through, in all what we meet in this earth. We are not alone. Christ, who incarnate, died and was risen, and he is alive. He is with us in all aspects of life. Let us believe in him and walk justly in loving God and loving one another. Amen. for that wonderful and inspiring message. Thank you. Together, we can do all things. Two are better than one. Thank you. As we gather today as the Congregation of Faith, let us join together in the prayers of the people and then we'll conclude it with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. God of our lives, through all the circling years, we trust in you. And we come to you on this Sabbath day with trust and hope and praises to you. Lord, today we are so thankful that we can gather and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the message that we just heard. Lord, we come today and we are thankful for the rain. We're thankful that the trees and the flowers are beginning to bloom and that spring is not far away. Lord, we know that you walk with us every single step of the way. You walk with us in good times and in bad. You walk with us when we feel depressed and alone and when we feel joyful and happy. Lord Jesus, you are always, always with us. Today, Lord, we pray for those in our congregation who are not here this morning. We pray for those who are traveling, that you keep them safe. We pray for those who are sick and shut in, and we pray that you be with them. And we pray for those who mourn, especially for the Tremble family this morning as they mourn Bob's passing. We pray that you give us strength for the journey we pray that you give us the spiritual bread that fills our lives and nourishes us. We pray that we remember in all things to be your people. Lord, we thank you that you call us out of the darkness into the light and out of death into the victory of the resurrection. We pray, Lord, your presence with us Again, we pray for all the names on our prayer list. There are so many needs. Some of them we have spoken of today. Others concerns the desires and prayers and meditations of our hearts that we lift up to you as we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. you that all are invited to join Reverend Anala for lunch at 1215 at the Southside 815 restaurant in Old Town. That's correct, Susan? Yeah. And that's open to everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I charge you as we go out from here this day to work together, to love together, to help one another, and to remember that we are all better off together than we are alone. Go out and share that message of Christ with a broken world who so greatly needs it. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with us all until we meet again. Amen. Amen.